Good morning, everybody. In today's session, we'll start off with the third module. In this module, you'll be studying about the spillways, types of spillways, and mainly about Ugi spillway. You'll be studying here in the Ugi spillway. You'll be studying about more about the upstream side and downstream side profile. energy dissipators devices and design of aprons using blinks method and coslas theory and some of the problems on this so first of all we'll know what is spillways a spillway is a structure which is constructed at the dam site for effective removal of excess water from the upstream side to the downstream side here just after the reservoir gets filled up the normal reservoir level the water starts flowing from the top of the spillway crust as the spillway crust kept at the normal reservoir level here the normal reservoir level is a level where the water rises af after the normal level under normal operating conditions that is normal reservoir level so depending upon the inflow rate the water will starts raising above the normal reservoir level and at the same time it will overflow over the spillway crust the water rises over the spillway crust up to the maximum reservoir level and reaches the maximum pos possible level therefore it is the only spillway which will dispose the surplus water and will not take the water raised above the maximum reservoir level the difference between this maximum reservoir level and normal reservoir level is nothing but the head of the dam here there had been no such structures over which it would have overflown the water level would have exceeded the maximum reservoir level and ultimately crossed the freeboard and thus to avoid this overtopping and failure of the dam here we are going to construct a structure which can remove the excess amount of water so next we'll go for what are the types of spillways here there are different types of spillways one is dry drop spillway overflow spillway chute spillway side channel spillway shaft spillways and siphon spillways these are differentiated depending upon the structure or the position of the position where the structure is being built and the working of the structures so first we'll go for side straight drop spillways this is a type of spillways wherein the water is freely going to drop from the crust it is a low wear and simple vertical fall type of structure the water flows freely from the crust under the action of gravity so here to provide scoring at the downstream side of the dam an actionary dam of artificial pool is to be constructed at the place of fall of the water here you can see this is a straight drop spillway over here so you can see and next we'll go for overflow spillway this is also called as ugi spillway about this one you'll be studying in detail in this module so here it is represented by a s shape curve so that it is called as ugi spillway it is an improved form of straight drop spillway because over there in the side in the 
straight drop spillway there was a chances of failure because the straight fall is going to happen so that's why we are going to provide a, a structure which can control the velocity of water and which can control the scoring of the downstream side of the dam structure so here it is mainly used in the gravity dumps and it got an advantage over a spillways for its high discharging efficiency so here in in this module you'll be studying about discharges also of ugi spillways so here you can see the structure it is in s shape okay next we'll go for chute spillway this one is also called as channel spillway for earthen and rock fill dams spillway is to be constructed separately away from the main valley so here for that purpose we are going to provide this side channel spillway so here and this is a simplest type of spillway which can easily be provided with a low cost and economical it is lighter and adaptable to any types of foundations so this is chute spillway or channel spillway next we go for side channel spillway the flow in this spillway is turned 90 degree after passing the crust such that the flow is parallel to the crust so the basic it is suitable for non rigid types of dams that is earthen dams it is preferably constructed where the space is not available effectively and providing the sufficient crust width for the channel spillway the discharge carries may be an open type or it might be a conduit type over here the cc your side channel spill next we go for shaft spillway the water from the reservoir enters into a vertical shaft which conveys this water into the horizontal tunnel which finally discharges the water into the downstream of the river this type of spillway is preferred where the space is not available for providing the above type of spillways if the inlet leg is provided in a shape of funnel it is called morning glory spillway it has a discharge which is maximum even at the lower head lower head this is a shaft spillway next we go for siphon spillway it works on the principle of siphonic action it consists of siphon pipe which inlet leg is kept just below the normal pool level and an air vent kept a normal pool level is connected to a crown of spillway when the water rises the pool level siphonic action starts automatically and the water discharge to the downstream side when the water level falls below the pool level the air enter through the air vent and discharging the discharging of water stops so here you can see this is your air vent once the water rises this is your normal pool level once the water rises the water is carried on in this vent and then finally it is taken from the upstream side and carried to the downstream side if there is no water over here so automatically the 
air enters into this and then the raise of water or carrying of water stops this is about siphon spillways next we'll go in detail about the oogie spillway or overflow spillways the shape of the lower nippe of freely falling jet over a sharp crested weir can be determined by the principle of projectile here see this is the profile of the oogie spillway this is the sharp crested weir and this one is your lower nippe and this is the higher nippe that is upper nippe this is the maximum reservoir level the difference between this sharp crested weir and the maximum reservoir level that is nothing but the head so this depending upon this we are going to determine the profile of the spillway so that is called as designed head generally for the sharp crested weir when the water level rises to the sharp crested weir exceeds over here see once the water level rises till here and from this point the water is going to rise from the point o to the point c you can see in the figure this is point o and this is point c after the point c the water is going to fall as a parabolic curve here the lower nippe that could come from the sharp crest weir could become the crest of the spillway so the area from the sharp crested weir and the lower nippe along with the basement this is called as a crest of the spillway and it is generally made of concrete or masonry here the lower nippe of freely falling jet will assume different profile for different heads over a sharp crested weir so generally the profile is confined to the lower nippe that could obtained for the maximum head so we are going to go for trial and error method for various profile and for various head but we are going to choose the profile wherein the head is maximum for that we are going to fix the profile of our spillway here in free for in free overfall spillway the water jet clearly falls away from the face of the spillway and the gap between the jet and the face is kept ventilated while in an oogie spillway the falling jet glides over the curved profile this is your curved profile and the water is going to glide over this profile of the spillway and there is no space between this weir and crest of the spillway under normal design conditions next we'll know what is cavitation here the crest of the oogie spillway can be made to conform only to particular nippe that could be obtained at a one particular head that head is known as design head this one i have i have shown in the profile this is your design head and generally represented as hd but in practical or sorry in practice the actual head of the water on the spillway crust called the operating head may be less or more than the design head if this operating head on the spillway is more than the designed head the 
lower nape of the falling jet may leave the ugi profile thereby generally negative pressure at the point of separation will be generated the generation of vacuum or negative pressure may lead to the formation of vapor bubbles in water while the absolute pressure reaches the vapor pressure when these vapor bubbles on moving downstream may enter a region where the absolute pressure is much higher this causes the vapor bubbles to collapse resulting in a high impact on the surface this continuous impact removes small particle particles of concrete or masonry causing a formation of pits on this surface this is known as pitting so overall this phenomena wherein the pitting is caused is called as cavitations hence it can be concluded that if the head of the water over a spillway is more than the design head the cavitation may occur on the other hand if the head of the water over the spillway is less than the design head the falling jet would adhere to the crust of the ugi spillway creating positive hydrostatic pressure and thereby reducing the discharge coefficient of the weir so i'll stop over here in the next session we'll continue with the design procedure of ugi spillway so today's question is for the fixing of the profile of the spillway what is the main criteria which is used